let's have a look at the next topic now. Now we are done with types of hydrocarbons, saturated, unsaturated, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. I've got an idea what they are. So now let's have a look at chains, branches, and rings. Carbon, as I've told you before, can form many, many types of compounds. It can form chains because of its catenation property. It can form branches. There'll be branch chain hydrocarbons, and you can have rings as well. So let's have a look how at how that happens. So carbon can you know, in form chains for up to so many, 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 many carbon atoms. You can have 11, you can have 12, you can have even 20, depending on, and it does form because carbon is like, it's a very, very, very stable catenate element. It can form many, many uh, compounds with long, long chains of carbon atoms. So that's one thing. In our NCRT course, it's restricted to 10, but if you go for higher studies such as uh, BSc or MSc in chemistry, you will, and even in organic chemistry, PhD, you will see that many, many carbon atoms and many, many rings can form, chains can form. So let's have a look at some of the chains. As I've said before, there can be two, so there can be a carbon compound like this, right? So this is one carbon compound. Let's draw ethane, for example. This is ethane. Right, this is one, two, three, four. This is ethane. Right, this is ethane. You can also have methane, but that's not really a chain. It's just a single carbon atom. Okay, this is methane. Okay. You can also have propane. Okay, and you just attach the hydrogen. Okay, so this is propane. Right? You can also have butane. So, like this, you can have butane. Okay, so this is butane, and so on and so forth. You can just get keep getting compounds with chains, 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 right? Continuously. You can even have a chain like this. So this is five carbon atoms. This is called pentane and the number of hydrogens are understood, right? So in this way, you can have chains, very, very long chains, very, very long chains, very, very long chains of carbon atoms, right? So that's one thing. Now let's have a look at another kind of thing. Let's have a look at a different perspective. Now we have till now like gone over like, you know, over chains and rings and when we take a particular uh, formula, we just restrict it to one particular structural formula, right? But actually, that's not the case. Sometimes you can have carbon atoms which are arranged in different ways and give different structures for the same formula. For the same molecular formula, a compound can have different structures. For example, let's have a look at the molecular formula compound C4H10, right? This is, you know, as for us, the formula for butane right but let's have a look at how it can be arranged if we look at one way it can be arranged like this one two three four four carbon atoms and we just put the hydrogens right so this is one way for drawing the structure of c4h10 this is one way but there is another way too take just three carbon atoms and to the middle one, attach another carbon, like this. So this is a branch. Can you realize that? It's a branch to this main parent chain. It's a branch. And to this, you attach three hydrogens. And to this, you attach, again, three hydrogens. And to this, too, you attach three hydrogens. So in this way, you can realize how it's the same formula, C4H10. Again, here it has four carbon atoms and ten hydrogen atoms. But again, same formula, but look, the structure is different. Here, this is like this CH3, this one, is like a branch to this parent, to this main chain, right? So you can see that the same molecular formula has different structural formulas, right? So these two compounds have the same molecular formula, but have different structural formulas. And this phenomenon of having the same molecular formula, but different structural formula is what we call structural isomerism. Structural 
isomerism right and these two are called isomers okay structural isomers okay they are called structural isomers i hope that's clear right so they have the same molecular formula c4h10 but they differ in their structural formulas and they are called structural isomers right now one thing to be noted here is that why i was hesitant to say butane for this formula earlier is because if this one has an has an IUPAC name of butane, this one need not have a name of butane because isomers have different IUPAC names. And you'll understand the word IUPAC names, that is International Union of Pure Applied Chemistry Nomenclature, when we do IUPAC nomenclature after just after this. So butane is the is the name for this compound, but not for this compound. The name of this compound is something else, which we'll understand when we're doing nomenclature, right? So structural isomers have different IUPAC names, but they have the same molecular formula, right? I hope that's absolutely clear, structural isomerism, right? Now, till now, we've looked at chains and we've looked at isomerism. Now, let's have a look at, okay, we even had a look at branch because this is an example of a branched chain hydrocarbon. It has three uh, carbon atoms in the chain, but see, this is like a branch to that main parent chain, right? So, again, this is an example of how carbon can form branched uh, hydrocarbon chains as well right now let's have a look at rings now rings is interesting let's have a look at rings now if you look at the formal if you look at the compound c5h10 oh sorry not c5h10 c6h12 okay c6h12 now, let's have a look at C6H12. First of all, put six carbon atoms. You can do this in one way, right? Like we take all the straight chain and, you know, attach hydrocarb uh, attach the hydrogen and you'll get one straight chain hydrocarbon. Okay, that's good. But there is another way to draw it in the form of a ring, right? Let's do that. We will take six carbons like this. Right? And then we attach each of them with single covalent bonds. Right. Next, there are 12 hydrogen. So this carbon can form two more bonds and all of the carbons can form two more bonds. So we attach two hydrogen to each carbon. OK, so we're attaching two hydrogen to each carbon like this. Right. And you can see here that we have six carbon atoms and we have 12 hydrogen atoms, right? Now, can you see this is in the form of a ring? This is like a ring, right? Can you see that? It's a ring. So this is an example of a ring, right? And usually these ring-shaped compounds get the prefix to their IUPAC name as cyclo. We usually add the prefix cyclo and the name of this compound is cyclohexane right if you draw the same straight chain hydrocarbon right like the one with like this one two three four five six right if you draw and attach the hydrogen then it will become hexane only hexane but since this is arranged in the form of a ring we call it cyclohexane okay so in this way you can understand that carbon can even form ring shaped uh, ring structured uh, hydrocarbons it can also form ring shaped compounds Right, and to that we add the uh, the prefix cyclo because again it is cyclic. It's a cyclic compound, and rings are also called cyclic compounds. Okay, so that's the example of a ring. How carbon can form chains, that is chains like this. It can form rings, and it can have branches as well, as I have explained right here. Thank you very much for joining me. This was all with chains, branches, and rings, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.